you want to sit back and enjoy some new publications in augmented reality, then keep watching. <laughs> Hi, I am Alexis Mercedes. I am the project manager for Fractal Labs. We are an app development team that is passionate about improving the UX of XR. On this channel, we document the intersection of Web3 and augmented reality as it unfolds. This episode is the 12th installment of reviewing augmented reality, where I look at 13 different publications in the Web3 metaverse over the reality. If your Web3 project is in need of a user interface like a mobile app or web app, we build those and are happy to help with that. But let's jump into the reviews. First up is Concert Hall by ArcVR. Now here is a venue. It's very inviting while still providing somewhat of a blank canvas, which allows the viewers to imagine their own event taking place in this space. I love the execution of lights here. Spotlights and shadows of varying intensity are exceptionally used to create context. Full marks on lighting execution. Look at the detail on these curtains. I enjoy these cutouts that allow you to view the world around you. It's like an AR VR hybrid, if you will. The size of the publication is really clever because it's large enough to feel real, but it's small enough that it loads well and fits inside an indoor space without ruining the illusions. You can get from one side to another by walking in most indoor spaces. An interactive piano where you can touch these keys and, and, and make it go would be so, so rad. But that could take away the, this could be anything quality of the space. La Galerie Pellegrin Marseille. La Galerie Pellegrin. I tried. This hex is owned by Raph Crypto, who I don't think I've reviewed on this channel before. This is the one gallery I'll show you today. I personally really connect with the artwork. It feels like a perfect marriage of the past and the future. Very hip, very now. Objectively, this space is wonderful because it is a cohesive collection. These pieces clearly go together and tell their own unique story. There are great name tags everywhere. And this Easter egg poster on the outside is pretty cool. I like the pattern on the floor. And when you look up, there's this giant model of a boat. Just delightful. If this was a physical gallery, an artifact like this one could be used to elevate the piece and provide context. Overall, it's extremely well curated. Bonus points for POAPS. If you didn't know, POAPS stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol. And it's a type of NFT that we use kind of as like t-shirt, been there, done that, got the po hat. Over Landlord referred me to this one. It's Catwoman's Sphere of Lights by Over Plus this is a quick, this story quick story, quick story, quick story of how I became a millionaire. It's so danceable. Fun song, relative content. There are assets in here that over provides but they've used them in a way i've never seen before and i think that's super fun and clever let's talk about sizing six months ago a builder would have created this and done it way too big i'm sure of it but here they've nailed it let's make it just slightly smaller so it works in spaces where you're likely to have a good wi-fi connection the color scheme is cohesive it's upbeat and relaxing and a place to actually spend time one thing I would have changed is using more human models. I've seen this statue 300 times and there's not only like so many ways you can use it. Finding other models that can populate the space and add character are cheap and easy to find. So I'd love to see that done. Or this could be an opportunity to bring in something fanciful like an octopus or a creature that you invented. That's where my imagination went. Another note is being able to read text. When I go to record this space, Over has an overlay 
that is written in white. It's hard to read when the background is white. As creators, we can deal with that by making sure there's tons of spaces that white text can show up on. But I think what would be better is if over themselves, change this font to something less common like yellow or give it a shadow or an outline. You know, there's a lot of stuff white doesn't show up on. Gear Run by Lux VR. I could wax poetic about the artistic qualities of this piece, what it symbolizes, what it means to me, how it fits in the greater uh, artistic landscape. I think it's really cool how well it stands on its own as an art piece. What To me, what's most important about it when viewed solely as an art piece is that AR is clearly the best venue for this work because of the physics of it all, how it inhabits the space, the mechanics, the angles, and the fact that it's an animated 3D model could really only be done in AR. And I think that is super important to note. Can you imagine how incredibly expensive it would be to create this as a physical piece? Viewing it in my room in augmented reality is much more powerful than just seeing a video of it. Expanding the viewpoint to include utility, I was thinking it could also be used as special effects. I played around with that a little bit and I was hoping to find occlusion on this one. It doesn't have that function on it. The web builder that one uses to publish these things has occlusion as just a little box and if LuxVR were to go in and check that box and republish we could make it so that my hand could pass in front of the model between my face and what we see. That would be cool. LM Designs 8 Stage Drip by LM Designs. I don't know if it was intentional to place the viewer right behind and below the booty of the dancer. But okay, that's where we're at, not complaining. This has a different approach to scale. It's larger than life. The floor is up high for some reason. I've had that issue with other publications from LM Designs. It's a detail I can overlook, but I bring it up again because I'm wondering if it's intentional. Comment below if I'm missing something. Is there an advantage for it to be lifted like that? The music is cool. I'd call it accessible industrial. I think the loop is a little too short or repetitive, but I love the way it aligns with the dancing and the mural animation. Are they in sync or do they just seem in sync? Does it matter? Existential crisis. Speaking of the mural animation, it caught me off guard at one point. I totally forgot it moved and it spooked me. Like other pieces from this creator, there's a cadence of peace and rhythm while also being erratic and unpredictable. I think this last shot of the dancing really shows that off. What a talented creator. Medigate's Escape Room by Discovery. My jaw was just dropped for the first several minutes of being in here. Such a great layout of the scenery. Hey, I've seen this lab equipment before. There are multiple interactive pieces, multiple kinds of maps, excellent sound design. I couldn't figure out how to get any of the boxes ticked, but I did try to follow one of the maps and had fun looking for clues. I pursued these things that looked kind of like notes. Uh, they didn't end up being anything, but it was, it was a fun pursuit. I thought about the option of giving the viewer verbal or written instructions but language and inclusion are a thing. And since we're sharing these things with strangers across the globe, maybe it's best to not use any language-based clues. This is a good example to bring up the question of floor or no floor. If they had placed a floor into the model, then some of these illusions would have been more successful, uh, would have put them all on the same plane. They only look like they're up a wall because they are placed farther away than 
the walls of my apartment are. But if you add a floor and I was in a space that was big enough, then we lose the opportunity for the illusion in the first place. If I was in a bigger space or outside, these would look like they were on the real ground and that would be way cooler. Also, it can be argued that putting in an artificial floor while doing this type of activity could raise a safety concern. The fact that I can actually see my ground and see my coffee table, etc., is safer. Medigate, I had no idea you had such a deep understanding of unity. I'm just in awe because you got over to do things that I didn't know it could do. This is amazing. Campus Jacks by Lee Better and Wine Country NFT. I like that the name of this publication is the same as the name of the place itself. While using the Over Mobile app, you can search by physical location for the IRL world, even though you can't search by publication name yet. This is the first time I'm re-reviewing a space because I know they keep this up to date and use it as a hub. Plus, Hexadized clued me in that there was a newer collection of experiences published all here, organized in celebration of the Grammys. I'm fully impressed by the variety of textures that cover all these different surfaces. Somehow they all look really good together. It looks very cohesive and they've got a wide variety of name tags here. The way that they design the outside still amazes me. There's this clue over here that says enter here. When I clicked to enter, I was taken on a weird goose chase. Over told me a couple of times that there was an error, it couldn't find it, it wasn't happening anymore, but I just ignored those warnings and eventually I ended up in a space with a limp avatar of my friend, who we all know as Wine Country NFT. I tried calling to him, do you know why there's a limp avatar? I digress. It turns out that the publication we saw earlier from LM Designs is also in this cluster. Let's check out one more before we move on from this space. Blackheart Honeymoon Live Acoustic Performance by Lead Better. This one is elegantly simple and unique at the same time. And there are videos within videos within videos. Never seen that before. The dancing model keeps it cute, makes it interesting, utilizes the AR capabilities. If this had occlusion turned on, I could have walked to another room and it would have stayed behind, for lack of a better word. That is, it would have stayed behind the wall. I kind of like the idea of live music playing in the other room. There's a huge rabbit hole we could go down here about using sound as context by like volume and proximity, but let's save that conversation for another day. The links in here connect to my boy's socials. I love that. This publication is a gem, a demo of layered platforms, and everything works. Tangled Swamp by Vimas. I thought I knew what this was going to be before I opened it because I saw a video of it on Twitter, but I could not be less prepared. This ish was creepy, and not because of the cow being abducted, because of the tangled swamp itself. This endless field of dying wheat is a lot. It was eerie and ghostly. I kept thinking there was a paranormal being amongst the chaff. The alien was the least of my worries. It has retro vibes throughout. You've got the old TV, the computer monitor, and an email address. How old school. I think this is the same guy who brought us Kaka. There weren't any links to the creator's socials, but I kind of like it this way better. It's flirty and old school. They're saying, you know where to find me. If your goal is to foster quality relationships, making viewers go one extra step rather than just hitting two buttons makes perfect sense. 
It won't grow your Twitter audience, but maybe that's not what you're going for. Don't be ridiculous, Andrea. Don't take my screen recordings as the full story. Definitely go check this out on your own. I'll have a link to it in the description box, of course. Drone Store by Daniel81. Over recently wrapped up their venues contest and I wanted to check out the winning piece. Like Cyber Nerd Baby, Daniel81 works in a team and together they built this really cool adventure. The Hex is owned by the same person that publishes a lot of Lo-Fi Radio's work. Okay, so this is a fully functional game. A game I got fully sucked into. You start off with 15 coins, and the only way to collect more coins is to buy a drone. Luckily, they give you enough coins that you can. This drone talks to you and gives you information about the game as you go along. I was immediately blown away by the proximity triggers. I didn't have to touch the drones to make these info screens pop up. And the UX design of it all is very visually pleasing. It's just the right amount of difficult, hard enough to be interesting. I'm saving up for a movie ticket. And they give you a carrot. By collecting enough of these coins, you can buy the second drone. It's fun, it's challenging, it's doable. Nobody had to explain to me how to use it. But I can totally see why it won. If you're a regular to my channel, you may recall a review of this space that I did in an earlier episode. It was a much earlier version of this publication that they were clearly testing out. I also predicted that we would see more games and there you have it. Curse by Yukio. I just made up a pronunciation for that one. I have no idea. I shouldn't have said curse like that. I should have said curse, curse. The thumbnail on this one looks really cool. Lots of negative space to play with. I tried to use it as special effects, but it was really hard since I'm filming alone. This experience really would have benefited from an occlusion option. It would have been great to play with foreground and background while using this overlay. Also music could have been added to add to the impact of this piece. I'm curious about the historical and cultural references here. Are these symbols related to something real or is this a strictly sci-fi kind of vibe? There might be some like factual history here. Are there ethnographic references I'm not getting? This experience looks way better vertical than horizontal which is not great for filming purposes if your platform of choice uses landscape mode, but it's perfectly fine if your purpose is to create an amazing over experience because most of the over functionality works better in portrait mode anyway. In this one, the glitching is effective. You can make the floor glitch by placing the floor of your experience at the exact same elevation as the hex itself that you own. And usually that would be a negative thing, but if that's what's going on here, I say it works. I think this looks cool. I love how it envelops my reality without replacing it. Centro de Limo en Medio by Dresan. Having a model this large is very grandiose and special feeling. It definitely felt like an experience. But I wonder if the cumbersome size of this is irksome to some users. I personally enjoyed the challenge of finding a way to frame this successfully and feel proud of some of the shots I got, more so than if it wasn't challenging. What do you think? Sound off in the comments below. When is a model too big? Do you like over experiences like this one? Another good conversation topic here is sound. What is the legality of playing a song that you don't have royalties to in an over experience? We're in uncharted territory here. You can create a decentralized identity in Soviet by Black Pearl. The 13th and final experience I have to show to you today is the coolest advertisement for a digital service I have ever seen. This venue feels like the setting of a conference. It is super successful because it provides the information that a conference would provide. 
look at all these details. Look at all these invitations to network. The information is masterfully presented in a way that is well organized and easy to digest. We keep talking about context creation in today's video. What blows me away the most about this publication is that the content matches up with the venue. It makes sense to present this type of information in this type of space. Other details that give this space context is the cool audio that backs up the tone and messaging this delightful snack bar, and a reminder that we're in a fictitious venue with the use of this whimsical bear. One could argue that this is a VR space because it doesn't interact with or display the real world around it. But the creators didn't ignore the fact that this is an AR platform. They made sure the space made sense when you are outside of the room, omitted a skybox, and didn't even use a ceiling so I can look up and remember that I'm still in my apartment. If I wanted to hire someone to create an advertisement for me inside of Over, these would be the first people I reached out to. While we're reviewing Over experiences, I'm putting my app QA hat on and want to point out two things that Over could easily do to improve the quality. Both suggestions are back buttons. From the search page, I look at my search results, I choose a selection. I wanna be able to go straight back to my search results. That's expected behavior. Come on app team, we can do this. It would also be great to have a back button from profile. Perhaps they don't want us to use a back button because there is this menu down at the bottom. Or in all instances, let's take the logout button away from this corner because it's occupying the space where a back button would be. And it's definitely weird to think you're hitting back and instead being asked, are you sure you wanna log out? That's in the wrong place. I love project managing apps. What I'm still wondering is, why isn't the ENS naming system able to pull up hexes accurately? I'll use this publication owned by Raf Crypto as an example, when I use the ENS name that they've purchased, as you can see, that's the name that was shows when I look at the publication and even when I'm inside of the experience, this is the land name that shows up. It's the ENS name, something that they paid for, but this link doesn't work. When I open it from a computer, it tells me that the location is unknown and that the land is available but it's not available really. It's already owned by somebody. I can do the same thing from my phone so that it's opening up inside of the native app instead of the website. And the exact same thing happens again. I wanted to make sure that you were able to see this experience. So I did some deep digging and I found an old Twitter post that has the land name that isn't an ENS name and I'm able to pull it up that way. It still shows the ENS name. However, I can at least see the old land name now and therefore actually be able to hook it up. And as you can see, the listing is very different now. It doesn't say available and it is located somewhere in the world. So I don't know what's going on with that. If you have any insights, please let me know. Have you bought an ENS? What were you hoping to get out of that process? Has it worked? I was really hoping that this would do something. I'll see you some other Tuesday with more content on the intersection of Web3 and XR. So if you liked this one, subscribe. You're gonna love it. Bye.